let's say we're all in the airplane, right? And, and there's a strong turbulence. And then the plane's going crazy. And, and, the, and the pilot says, oh man, we might crash. Nothing, nothing can really help us. Guys, get ready. And then outside the window, you see something flying. Is that, is that a ghost? Is that a bird? Is that a superman? No, it's Jesus. And how many of you will say, Jesus, if that's you, let me step out of this plane and fly with you. It's the same story. Because I heard some people say, those other disciples, they didn't have courage to step out of the boat. Well, you, you, you don't have the courage to step out of your airplane and say, let me fly with you, Jesus. <laughs> but anyway, he got to actually walk on water. But what happened when he lost the sight of Jesus? It says, he saw the water and he saw the wind. And he starts sinking. But even there, that's kind of funny. <laughs> Peter saw wind. Can you see wind? Yeah. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> when you read the Bible, read carefully. It's really fun. It says, Peter saw wind. <laughs> Is that supernatural? <laughs> no, no, no. He didn't see wind. He felt it. And he started thinking about it. What? wind can do. Oh, this wind, this water, I'm going to sink. His eyes were not on Jesus. His eyes were on his circumstance. And he started falling and sinking. That's what we do when we worry. When we are worrying, instead of having our eyes on Jesus, we are having our eyes on our circumstance. And like Peter saw the wind, we are seeing and meditating and thinking about all the bad things that could happen because of the environment. And just like Peter sinking into water, you know, all of a sudden, your heart sinks. Something happens. And you go, my heart sank. That's just like because as Christians, we are living supernatural life. You are walking on water every day. Amen. Who said that living a Christian life is average, that it's normal? It's not. From the fact that you are born again through faith in Jesus Christ, every step that you're taking, you're walking on water, you're living a supernatural life anyway. And some people say, well, I'm not crazy. Well, the, from the moment that you decide to believe that Jesus who died 2,000 years ago and rose again and that He's your Savior, you're crazy. Amen. People don't think you're normal, logical, anyway. So stop pretending like you're normal. And start living like a child of God, a supernatural, mighty, powerful you know the Bible says that fix your eyes on Jesus Amen. the mistake that Peter made was that instead of fixing his eyes on Jesus who enabled him from the beginning to walk on water his eyes were on the wind that he couldn't even see Amen. this is what you need to do instead of focusing on fear or your failures or mistakes Focus on Jesus. Amen. What does that really look like? Because, you, I mean, what, like, do you have to just always have the cross in front of you? Like, Jesus, I'm fixing my eyes on you. <laughs> no, that's not what it means. What does that really mean? Because for me, like, things have to be practical. I mean, it sounds all good. Fix your eyes on Jesus. How do I do that? What does that mean? This is what Always look at what God is doing instead of looking at what the enemy is doing. Yeah. That's really good one. Yeah. Because we have this natural tendency to see what's wrong. Everybody's good at looking at what's wrong. There are some critical people out there and they 
they say, well, you know what? I am very smart. And I love to pick out what's wrong with you. <laughs> right? They just, they just know what to say to make you upset and angry. This is what's wrong with you. No. If you have the eyes of God, instead of looking at what's wrong, you look at what God is doing. Amen. In the midst of all the trials, in the midst of chaos, what is God really doing? And when you start looking at those things and focus on those things, all of a sudden, your heart will be filled with hope. Because you can start praising Him for all the wonderful things that He is doing in our lives. Amen. Every time the enemy try to turn your eyes and say, look at this problem. Oh, it's going to be so bad. You're going to die. You say, I have a choice. I don't have to fix my eyes on that. I could fix my eyes on what God is doing. Amen. Oh, so this is what God is doing. I'll choose to believe this. Amen. Receive this. Amen. Amen. Remember, you are powerful and free, Amen. which means you could always choose to think what is good and what is right. Amen. Learn to fight the battle. Amen. You know what? I could just go on and on and on, but let me let me try to land this thing, okay? <laughs> Holy Spirit, the spirit of sonship. Instead of having this spirit of slave to fear, it says he's giving you a spirit of sonship. Amen. What it means is this: that the Holy Spirit who comes to you. And makes you realize that you are loved by God. Amen. And that perfect love casts out fear. Amen. And Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Amen. So every time there's a lie, the spirit of God will tell you the truth. Amen. Jesus said, when the spirit comes on you, he's going to teach you Amen. and remind you Amen. of all the things that I have said to you. Amen. Which means, you're worried about something, but instead of staying there, Holy Spirit says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, make your request known to God. Amen. And He's going to protect your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. Oh, why was I worried? Why was, why was I so anxious? I could actually choose to pray instead of worrying. You could constantly make good choices by remembering and knowing the truth. Amen. Do you know who's really filled with the Holy Spirit? A person could always make choice based on the truth. Amen. Based on the Word of God. Amen. So, it's not that people were jumping up and down and singing and, you know, praying in tongue and, you know, have this fire coming out from their hand. But those who could choose to obey out of that love for God. So somebody comes up to you and slaps you in the face. If you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you will turn your cheek. <laughs> Often people will actually slap back <laughs> and then go home and say, I'm sorry, God. <laughs> now I remember. <laughs> Always rely on the Holy Spirit because it is the Holy Spirit who's leading you. The scripture that we read today, it says, Those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children. Amen. Amen. Holy Spirit lives in you. Amen. It's constantly and always. <coughs> Just remember this one thing. You have choice. Amen. You're free. Amen. Since you guys are so good, I'm going to just give you one last thing. I don't want to stop. <laughs> this is a real question. A, per a deacon came up to me and said, Pastor Samuel, I really want to hear God's voice. 
I've been Christian for 30 years. And I hear people say that they hear God's voice, but I never heard God's voice. Can you tell me how to hear God's voice? Is this interesting to you? To be continued tomorrow night. <laughs> And this 
old lady came to him and they bumped into each other. And, and this old man says, God, not her. <laughs> Don't tempt me. And then when that pretty young lady came to him, bumped him, to him that joke will be done. <laughs> I hear you, God. <laughs> It's really about the spirit of truth that tells you and be able to say, this is the truth and that's a lie. So I, I say, everything that's good and positive, it's from the Lord. Amen. If, you, if you're praying and you hear the voice, you got to go pray. I mean, you got to go study. Is that, who is that from? Who is that from? Do you, do you think the enemy will say, go study? Do you think you, you yourself will say, I gotta go study? No. It's the Holy Spirit. You have a test tomorrow. Stop praying. Go study. <laughs> but that's when we go, I reject you. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I mean, it was a was a story, funny story about this old man who bumps into the pretty lady and go, oh, that job will be done. But that's how we try to discern too. Go study. I don't want to. This is not God's voice. I have tests tomorrow, but I'm going to focus on God and I'm going to pray. How come God never helps me when I have tests? Because you don't listen to him. He told you to study. <laughs> <laughs> it is so Good to be led by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, I have one more story. <laughs> I preach every more. I, I not anymore, but back in when when I was in San Francisco, I was in charge of morning prayer. So I would go up and preach every morning. So I wake up three o'clock in the morning, and that's when my wife had three babies, and so. She was always tired and exhausted. And she didn't have time to clean the house. She didn't have really time to wash dishes. And one morning, I woke up getting ready for the morning prayer. Three o'clock in the morning, I'm praying and I'm preparing the message. But I had, I had my eyes open and my eyes are just constantly seeing these piles of dishes. And it's bothering me. And the Holy Spirit says, go wash those dishes. I said, God, I'm getting ready for morning prayer. I'm a pastor preparing this precious message. And I am asking and crying out that I'll be filled with power. What do you mean go wash those dishes? <laughs> this can't be God. I reject your enemy. <laughs> Get away. But it was so strong. And I knew. It can't be the enemy who says, go wash the dishes for your wife. Amen. The enemy hates my wife. The devil hates my wife. The devil does not want my wife to be loved and helped. So that can't be the enemy's voice. And I knew it wasn't me. It was not my thought. I don't, I don't like doing dishes. But when I do it, I'm good. But I don't like it. So I concluded, this must be God's voice. So I chose to listen to that voice and wash the dishes. Three o'clock until five. Because there were so many. And you know, when I do it, I have to do it right. What can wash away my sins? That was worship. Amen. That was worship. And then I went to church, came home. And my wife was up, so I said, Honey, do you see anything different? <laughs> and she goes, I already saw it before you came. And she started crying. I was like, what did I do? 
<laughs> she said, last night, before I went to sleep, I prayed, God, I wish there were angels to come and do my dishes. <laughs> Um, my parents, my friends, everybody's in New York. I'm here all by myself and I'm taking care of all my family members. I'm taking care of my husband and my children. Who's taking care of me? And she fell asleep. Praise the Lord. And in the morning, <laughs> yo, wake up, man. Listen, go wash that dishes. <laughs> Yes, sir. Amen. That's how you live a Christian life. Amen. You got to hear the voice of God. Amen. And you got to know that you are free. And you get to make choices. Amen. Because listen, I could have decided, no, no, no. I'm going to just go preach and forget about it. But when I chose to listen and said, this is the right thing to do, somebody was touched by God. Amen. You're powerful people. Amen. You're awesome. Amen. You're loved by God. Amen. So no more fear. Amen. Don't be driven by fear. Don't be afraid. Amen. But look to God. Amen. And listen to God. Amen. Supernatural life. Amen. 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 I have a homework for you. Tonight, you are going to hear the voice of God. Amen. Because the Spirit of Truth lives in you. Amen. And it's going to guide you. Amen. You will obey. Amen. Just like Peter obeyed and prayed for a crippled man, he said, no silver or gold, but in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's what you're going to do. Amen. When fear comes to you, say, get away. Amen. Get away. I don't want fear. I have love in my heart. Amen. Holy Spirit, I ask that right now, Amen. any kind of fear that has been holding back your powerful, amazing children, I rebuke it and cast it out in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you're a person who's been worried and anxious, I want you to know that it's because you're so powerful. Amen. The enemy was trying to hold you back from doing what you were called to do. This is the night. Tonight, truth has set you free. Amen. You are powerful. You are awesome. Amen. I want you to stand. choice. I want you to think about this. I told you, what is repentance? Changing your mind. Amen. Make a decision tonight. And if that's you, I want you to come out. The decision is this. I used to live in fear. But no more. Now I know that I am free. And I have the spirit of truth living inside of me. Amen. And I'm going to choose to live by the truth. Amen. If that's you, I want you to just come forward. Yeah. Praise God. 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 Awesome, awesome, awesome. Wonderful, wonderful. Just talk to each other and say, Man, you're so smart. Let's start praying together. Just invite the Holy Spirit. Just say, I want more of you. More of you, more of you. I just want more of you. Fill my heart with your amazing and awesome.
Amen. You don't have to, you don't, don't, don't try to cast out the enemy. Okay? Don't even pay attention. I, I've seen people pray, Oh, Jesus. Oh, enemy, go away. Oh, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I really care. Oh, Jesus. If I was talking to you and you're constantly going, Oh, so I'm talking to you here. And all of a sudden you go, Hey, 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 hey. Don't. Oh, by the way. Oh, hey, hey, hey. That, that's not a good conversation. Okay? So, start saying, God, I want to focus on you. Just fill my heart with your love. Just more of you. And his love, his perfect love, will dissolve all the fear that was in your heart. So invite him. Let's pray to him. Come on. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. So open your mouth and start confessing your love. Jesus, I love you. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We welcome you. Whatever the thought that came to your mind, whatever the voice that God is saying to you, 
we just want to respond to Him. Just speak back to Him. So, yeah, start having this that conversation. Whatever He said. Just love. 
love to worship you. We choose to worship you. No more fear. No. But we are free. We are powerful. We are awesome. And we can't help it because it's in our DNA. The Spirit of God. We just want more of you. More of you. More of you. Yes, God, come.